Mac, I had a great open for the show that you poo-pooed. So last second, I'm going to ask you, what do you want to do to start the show? Uh, Goo, I would like you to tell me what your Rushmore, and we'll get back to this in the episode. One second. What is a Mount Rushmore? So if if you're new to the program here, a Mount Rushmore is the four nicest looking people on the planet. And then once you determine that every year, you carve it into a mountain, a new mountain. Did you just come up with that? Yeah, just made that up. Um, okay. So if you're if you're new to that, it, people's hottest person on the planet every four years gets put up there. I like uh, that. Goo, mm-hmm. you're Mount Rushmore of comic book television shows. Now take oh. a breather. Think about it for a little bit. I'll give you mine, and then maybe you can jump back in Is here it with yours. Live action or animated? I it it's up to you. I I would say. Give give me including animated. Give me. Including so I already animated. have three off the top of my mind, and yes, okay. they are all Batman. But <laughs> Batman the animated series. Oh, I guess you'll Bat- go first. Yep, Batman Beyond, mm-hmm. the Harley Quinn show, and then X Men ninety seven. Done. Okay, those are your four. Uh, yeah, I would them. go twenty uh, nineteen's Watchmen on HBO. That's a great one. Yeah. Um, I think Loki season one is on there. Uh, X Men ninety seven is on there. And then I would probably go Batman the Animated Series for my fourth. And I ask you that, Goo, because today mm-hmm. we're discussing possibly an entry into that Mount Rushmore. So I think it's relevant. Hashtag Kim Kardashian. Can you come back to me real quick? Goo, you got an addendum, uh, amendment on yours? Yeah, addendum, Daredevil amendment? belongs on there. Mm-hmm. Loki does. WandaVision. How many can I put on there? <laughs> If you notice in the notes here, I said I'm I I was considering maybe Jess Jones season one, mm-hmm. um, and then I said Aku dare, maybe Daredevil for you. Daredevil for so, me is definitely on there. So if you if you had to go two and two, two animated, two live action, what's your four? So it's Batman the animated series. Yeah, I would take X Men ninety seven over the original. Agreed. And then we go Daredevil, and here's the issue that we run into is mm-hmm. that. Is the sum of Loki, both season one and two, better than the one season of WandaVision for me? Here we go, actually. Yeah. I almost forgot this, even though I wrote it down. Uh, Watchmen 2019. Oh, Watchmen as well. Uh, And The Boys. The Boys is on. Oh, The Boys. Okay, so just throw the Marvel stuff off. I'll keep Daredevil, Mm -hmm. The Boys, and then the two animated series. Okay. Well, let's see if our approaching conversation has anything to do with a top four here. Oh, wait. Oh, this show here? I like the Penguin as well. Mm. Let's put that at the top and slide everything else down. Bang. One, two, three, yeah! Mac and Goo! Jaws 3! Mac and Goo! King of Queens! Mac and Goo! Meryl Streep! Mac Goo! Entertainment! Ah! goo and i'm mac what a great open by you when's the not last bad. time you've actually done anything not bad. No, it's been a long time i know because i was actually i was thinking about it earlier i'm like pre-show wise mac generally does 75 percent of the work mm. you're very good pre-show you do a mm-hmm. lot of the notes good prep get us prepared i usually do the open and mac sack and then anything post plus yeah. i bring my award-winning personality to this program that's right that's that right People people love me. People love my opinions on witches. They love how I'm I'm out there. I'm putting myself out there. I'm never on the fence about anything. I think you got to create a shirt that says witches get stitches. That's a good one. It's not bad. But I also want to want to run into a real witch and then have them put a put a spell on me. Little hacks on you? Yeah, I wouldn't want that. Pincushion type of situation? That is not witchcraft. That is, what is it called? The pincushion with the... Yeah, I'd say that's witchcraft. I thought it like New Orleans. What is that called? It's like the Bayou. Yeah, did they do a whole season of American Horror Story about witches in the Bayou? Did they? Yeah. I don't know what it's. I'm not going to Google. I don't want to Google. It's called the uh, beignets. <laughs> beignets are delicious. Beignets are delicious. All right, that's, that's our show. That's okay, <laughs> folks. Today we are discussing. Uh, what IGN.com gave a five out of 10 television show that is the penguin. The penguin is a TVMA gangster tragedy, crime, and drama. Eight episodes totaling. I did, I forgot to get the minutes there, goo. 
but they were roughly our episodes. Yeah, Finale a was a point. little longer, so mm-hmm. we probably had about eight hours of programming, maybe a little less. You take the credits and the in the and whatnot out. Uh, Goo on Roddy T's ninety five percent from the critics, ninety two percent from the audience, and on Metacritic a seventy two. Now I think that is at least from my perspective how I'm sort of feeling about this show. Baseline extremely likable. But I think that 72 on Metacritic sort of echoes at least what I'm maybe feeling is it didn't quite hit those high highs of some of the past great comic books. Isn't shows. 72 really high, though? 72 is pretty good for yeah. sure. But for example, 2019's Watchmen, 85. So, so that- I would also I think that Watchmen, while I like the Penguin better, I would say, because I love these characters. I love Batman and I love the idea of doing more stuff with characters like this on HBO. Watchmen probably is a better show. Well, and it's sort of, it was set up to be that way too, right? Because yeah. this is a show in between two movies, whereas Watchmen was its own thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's more satisfying. It's more David self Yeah. Um, and so I guess it's maybe a little unfair to the Penguin, but also when you're talking about all-time great shows, these are the types of, of, of uh, hairs you kind of you have to split. Yes. Um, so I, I, I'm i interested to hear how you received the final couple episodes of this show and how the people have, because early on, there was a lot of talk about maybe this could be the greatest comic book show ever or in the conversation for it. And to me, I don't think it quite got there, but I still thought it was fantastic. I'm not sure if I would put it on my rush more, but it is right there. I think it's like firmly a tier below for me. I, I just don't think it hit the high high. Is that a show that we're going to do soon? Comic book tears, comic book show tears. Maybe Uh, we do owe the people at least one tearing by the end of the year. They're pretty (laughs) upset about October. That's that's fair. And if you're tuning into this program and have no idea what this show is attached to, uh, this was, I guess, um, uh, what's it called when it's like, um, God, I'm really, I should know the word and I'm forgetting like a, an attachment to something, post something, uh, a, a, not a preamble, but something like that. But post, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is an add on to the Batman, which came out in it's 20, a sequel series. It's a yeah, came out yeah. in 2022, I believe, was the Batman. Mm-hmm. And uh, this show uh, was never really meant to be when that movie uh, came about. And then as they were developing this world, this Gotham. Um, they sort of stumbled into this and this ended up being something that I think was certainly a worthwhile endeavor and broadened the universe. And I think something they're going to continue to do and also serves as like a, an appetizer and a lead into the second movie on top. Yeah. Of it. But the one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is it took us two years to get this show. Mm. It's going to take us two more years to get the Batman movie. I hope right. that they're able to not rush, but at least like get into the next show a little bit quicker than the amount of space between the Batman and the Penguin. I agree. The Batman two should have been this year. The Penguin should have been last year. Give me yes. one a year, and that and that would would be more appealing, I think, for the most. Even part. if it's every three years, actually, yeah, because they're going to start shooting the Batman two in twenty twenty five. So even if there's three years between the movies, and then somewhere nestled in between is a television show. Cool. Well, that's what we got here. I would like that condensed a little bit more. No, because the Batman 2 isn't going to come out until 2026, right? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Correct. As I, as I was. Uh, Goo, the creator slash showrunner of this show yes. <laughs> is Lauren Lafranc. I think it's just Lafranc, but I like saying Lafranc. Uh, mm-hmm. You would know her as a writer on the show Chuck, which I've never oh. seen an episode of, but was somewhat somewhat popular. Uh, she was also a writer on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and something called Impulse that has decent grades. Uh, I don't know what her connection was to this universe or to Matt Reeves, um, mm-hmm. but for someone who that had never been a showrunner, or at least to this magnitude, I thought this show was really well done, amazingly well written. She was a writer on the show as yeah. well. And that's really, I think, um, and that's a credit to Reeves for, for starting this universe in the first place. But the writing and the character development in this show was unbelievable. I also think for having eight episodes, like that's a real good number of episodes. They don't really waste any time and everything on the show has a purpose. Yeah, the, we'll get to that in a, in a few, but like barometer wise, you were pretty well gripped most yeah. of these eight hours. It wasn't too many wasted moments in here, if any. No. So they did a wonderful job. 
Uh, synopsis of the Penguin. Following the events of the Batman, Oz Cobb, a.k.a. the Penguin, makes a play to seize the reins of the crime world in Gotham. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. It's pretty concise. It uh, doesn't mention two of the other main characters, but it's it's good enough to sell you, right? Mm, yes. I mean, Gotham is, I would say there's four main characters. Gotham is one of them. Okay. No, that's fair. That's definitely fair. Goo, this show stars Colin Farrell as Oz Cobb slash the Penguin, of course, reprising his role from the Batman. Kristen Milioti as Sophia Falcone, a.k.a. Sophia Gigante. And before we get any further, this was her show. As good as Colin Farrell is, mm -hmm. is as Oz Cobb, you almost, you almost not care is, is not what I'm meaning, but she is so good. She becomes the, like the eye of the storm, the center of yeah. the show here. Yeah. So if they do, and they are going to do another show with another villain of Batman, another rogues gallery character, like I'm so curious, like not who they choose for that but who they shoehorn in there as the secondary character that we're going to fall in love with. Yeah. It's going to be hard to live up to Kristen Milioti. That's for sure. Uh, Renzi Feliz plays Victor Aguilar, AKA Vic and the showrunner LaFranc describes Vic as the heartbeat of this show. And I yeah. think that's pretty apt too. I think he is more the common man. Mm -hmm. We're more going through it the way he is. Yeah, and a lot of outlets, and I agree with this, they describe his character as the Penguin's Robin. Yep. Yeah, that's – and I, I think that's kind of dumbed down, but that's good enough. That's good enough, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Deirdre O'Connell as Francis Cobb, Ozzy's mother. She's Carmen great. Jogo as Eve Carlo, the sort of love interest slash friend of Oz. Also great. Yeah. Uh, Theo Rossi as Dr. Julian Rush, which will have – a little thing on him in, in spoilers. Yeah. Uh, Clancy Brown as Salvatore Moroni, who was named in the Batman, but we didn't see him on screen. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'll say is Clancy Brown is almost always a little too much for me. He's <laughs> he's just he's a little too much for me, but he was bad, he was good enough. Bad. Clancy Brown. <laughs> Michael Kelly is Johnny Vitti who gets tied up in this series. You are I'm so jealous very, of this entire very jealous show. Of that. And then, Goo, we get some cameos. No spoilers here. Uh, people we saw from the Batman. Um, Mark Strong plays Carmine Falcone. He replaces John Turturro because John Turturro, I think, was shooting uh, Severance instead of this. And oh. He was good I enough. I don't blame him. You know, it's, it's fine. He was only in a I prefer Turturro, by the way. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, because Mark Strong was almost too mean. Totoro wins you over a little bit, a little more mm -hmm. playful. Uh, Craig Walker is Detective Marcus Wise. He's we saw best. him as one of the corrupt policemen in the movie. He comes back in here and does a very nice job. Uh, Con O'Neill as Chief Mackenzie Bach, Goo's favorite character in the whole yep. universe. <laughs> hey, Sophia, what are you doing over here? <laughs> I have your family. So what are you doing, Sophia? <laughs> and then we get a couple couple scenes in here uh, with Jamie Lawson as Bella Real, who is the mayor elect, as we've seen at the end of the Batman. Uh, Goo, Lauren LaFranc, again, the showrunner, I'm going to keep saying her name as often as I can, describes this show primarily as a tragedy. Mm -hmm. I know there are other themes and, and whatnot that are picked up in this, but I, it's hard not to agree with her because this really is, by the end of it, this show really is a tragedy. Yes. Everything. So first off, all Oz ever wants on this show is validation. Mm. And that is from everybody. And he will say anything to anybody to get what he wants. And he almost just keeps on making up his own rules for himself as he goes, where by the end of it, yes, he gets what he wants, but he doesn't. Like, Tragedy! like he's, he's there. Tragedy! But the way that he is, like, he thinks that he has finally appeased certain people, mm. but At his mind, thought? his At mind is thought? warping, like, the reality to the point of, like, nothing that he actually set out to do is there. Yeah. But in his mind, it, he's like, yep, I did it. And what the, the, the best part about this show, mm -hmm. what makes this show so fucking awesome is the dichotomy between Oz and Sophia. Yeah, And where they're at certain points are at the same level. One goes up, one goes down the back and forth and where they all end up. And ultimately 
it's it works really well because one is striving for what the other has. Yeah. And the other one that has it doesn't want that, trying to get rid of that, trying to get away from that. And that this vicious cycle of that is is really what makes the show go. It's also the great rags to riches story where it's almost like when a poor person comes and like wins the lottery mm. and then they just buy a bunch of shit and like rich people are like, oh, this is still really like so Sophia calls everything in his apartment tacky and trashy and stuff. But then when he has like people that aren't from high society, they're like, oh, this is really nice stuff. <laughs> uh, Goo, I mentioned at the top um, and we've this has been a, a, a topic of conversation surrounding this series. Um, when this series was first conceived, Matt Reeves uh, began thinking about this series during post post during post production of the first movie. The original plan, once he was getting going with this Penguin stuff, was to have the story that we saw play out over these eight episodes essentially be the first act of the sequel. Um, but he didn't really know how to put that together, and before no. he had even put pen to paper, HBO had approached him and said, "Hey." Like, we're looking for a show from your universe. Is there anything, like, can you give us anything? Like, don't save all the good stuff for the movies. And he started talking about this Oz story, and it was actually an HBO exec executive named Casey Bloys. He's the CEO. It was like, that's it. That story, that's the show. So mm -hmm. credit to HBO, and HBO always does this, but credit for them to them for finding the niche here, this in-between that worked so well. And yes, is this similar? Is this character similar say to a tony soprano sure sure everything sure. is similar to everything nowadays yeah and when you're talking gangster crime mob movies you're never gonna have a new idea it's just mm -hmm. not possible so you know it, i guess there's appropriate critiques there but having that set with the backdrop of gotham and in a batman universe obviously it plays it up a little bit more uh goo before we we get too deep into things um, just to make the timeline clear here, actually the timeline's not clear, but to, to figure out where we're operating is the first episode takes place about a week after the end of the movie, a week mm -hmm. after the flood and whatnot. And then, uh, in that, in Batman's final monologue of that movie, he says it's Wednesday, November 6th. And I, I have to think what takes place over our eight episodes. It has to take place over a couple of months of time frame. Do they because celebrate all... Thanksgiving on this show? Did they? <laughs> That's a great question. I didn't see a Thanksgiving episode in there. Um, but some of the timelines and some of the shit we see, there's no way it could have happened over a week or two weeks. It had to have been a few, if not a month or two. Uh, so that's pretty unclear. I think we'll get a more stable timeline once we get into the second movie. Maybe we're like end of December, New Year type of situation now. And this whole show gets kicked off. And we get introduced to the Falcone family in this show because not only was Oz tied in with him, but in the first. Well, the entire minutes, Falcone family. We yeah. obviously meet uh, Carmine in the back. That's, yeah, right. Obviously, yeah. Oz is tied in with them anyways. But why this becomes an Oz and Falcone story is because in the first 15 minutes of the show, and it's what sort of ropes you in, Oz kills Sophia's brother, Alberto. Mr. Mazel. Yep. Yeah. And it's all because, and this is what I love about it, he made fun of him. Yeah, it it. To a T, it's really what Oz is and what Oz has been fighting against his whole life. This idea that he's not good enough. Yes. And when he gets belittled by Alberto, he snaps. And that's mm -hmm. that little character trait that really defines who Oz is. I also love the way he walks. Yeah, it's perfect. I don't I don't know how many how many different walks he tried. The way Colin Farrell does it is perfect. I think it was the end or the beginning of episode five they show him walking away from a car and it's like really exaggerated. I'm like, mm -hmm. that is a fucking penguin. <laughs> it's great. It's, great. it's, it's a, a penguin. So this also has a lot to do with class warfare as well. Yeah. Which I think also is like pretty well tied into like mm -hmm. mob stories, people mm -hmm. trying to be made men or work their way up the ladder. That has a lot to do with class warfare and especially with the fallout from the Batman, how mm -hmm. the, the shittier, the poor areas of town aren't getting attention and the rich areas are. So two things here. Number one, they uh, start a lot of scenes by showing off the bridge that separates the rich and the poor in uh, Gotham. And then they also show a lot of starting with like a skyline and then going down like four or five levels to really show how low the penguin is here. Yeah. You know what uh, the bridge shots and, and things like that always the remind Elliot? me of? Yeah. I don't know if if you remember this or know anything about uh, Rio de Janeiro, but this was especially underlined when they held the 
think it was the Olympics there or World Cup, something like that. Rio is pretty famously known for literally just sectioning off the poor area with a gigantic yeah. wall. So yeah. 30 feet away, rich highway, whatever behind that, it's all poor and slums. And they build Gotham out in a pretty sam similar manner in yeah. this world. I also think so. I think Christopher Nolan did a pretty good job of it. But this this show and the movie has done the best job of building out like a rich, like you understand Gotham. I think already one yes. movie's worth, and of course the show, Gotham is more central to this I story than it ever was. I know. I'm summarizing what you're saying. Is more central to this story and this yes. universe than it ever was in Nolan's. Yeah, well, I think Nolan did a pretty good job. I think Burton uh, didn't really focus on it. Schumacher, I can't even think back to anything Gotham-wise, but besides like the motorcycle races and <laughs> Coolio in the streets, the yeah. animated series did a pretty good job as well, too. Sure. But yeah. oh, uh, credit where credit is due, the first Joker movie does a pretty good job as well. Agreed. I'll agree with you on that for sure. Definitely. I guess that's the end of the podcast. We gave yeah. a compliment to Joker. <laughs> Let's Maybe get to the ever given. nonagon here, Mac. And fun factor, there is a lot of, I think, the backstabbing on this mm. show. Because to sum up the penguin in one word is weasel. He is a weasel. Why don't they call you him You can't the trust. They should just call him weasel. You can't trust it's a word fat. he is saying to anybody. The, the the double talk. He's always yep. he's all whatever he says is never the truth. Um he's a true that, hype man. He's trying to hype everybody up, but he doesn't believe any of it. Yeah. Or maybe he does and he just goes back he's on it. He's constantly cupping the balls. Constantly. <laughs> That's all he's doing. <laughs> uh good to that point. Uh, this show has a lot of fun with comeuppance and revenge. Mm -hmm. Like that's the fun factor in this show. The anticipation of someone you fucking hate getting theirs. That's a lot of what drives the fun behind this show. Satisfactor. And I was extremely satisfied with not only how the show ended, but the entire eight episode run. I think everything surrounding Sophia for 80% of this season is incredibly satisfying. Watching her become Sophie, Sophia Gigante is mm -hmm. great. I do feel like the last couple of episodes did not satisfy me enough when it came to the Oz stuff or the overarching Gotham stuff. Number one, because it was pretty obvious where they were going. And number two, which we'll get in more so in spoilers, there is a glaring, glaring hole yes, in all but, of this. So I think that maybe you aren't adding in like, I think the relationship with his mother is extremely satisfying and how this character is going to be. It. And I, I also it. think that moving forward in the next movie or when he shows up again, he's going to be a completely different character. He's not going to be as like, you know, low level, uh, low class. He's going to be a little bit, he's going to fit in more with society. Goo, I hear you. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying all the stuff with his mother was established really early. And you had a pretty good idea of where that was going to end up. So by the end no, of it, you're like, yeah, not, I get no, it. No, not with her feelings on the boy. Ah, uh, you knew that was going to crack at some point. You knew that was coming. No. And then also how he responds to it is the best. Yeah, I I to me like that was sort of telegraphed. But that's if it if it worked better for you, that's fine. I'm not gonna say it shouldn't. Are you calling me stupid? <laughs> I think we should just both start acting like the penguin moving forward. <laughs> is that whenever you perceive like you're being slighted in the littlest, just fucking attack the other person. Just shoot the other person. By the way, this has nothing to do with the Penguin. I was watching an interview with Steve Carell earlier, and uh, someone asked him about the improv scene on The Office where he kept on pulling out a gun, and he said that when I was at Second City, there was someone that always did that, and we thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> and the teacher one day had to ask him for all of his guns. Uh, the teacher in that scene is Ken Jeong, right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Where he's in the class. Um, oh, that's so good. Michael Scar. Barometer, I was not bored. No, I it is my gripes with this show really don't have anything to do with barometer. Halloween, will this show wane over time? 
I don't know how much of a rewatchable show this will be. Um, maybe going back to pick up on some of the Sophia stuff because I think that she's going to play a bigger role moving forward too. Um, much like when I was watching this, I had to go back and rewatch the Batman once again. So maybe it's just when something new comes up. Uh, when something new comes out, it's just picking up more of these breadcrumbs as they're leaving behind. Yeah, I I don't know if there's going to be much rewatchability here, and part of that goes into my overarching critique is that it does lack this satisfying conclusion or this big pants tent moment that satisfying. that that it sort of needed at the end. Um, it doesn't make the show like it doesn't really diminish the show because it had to fit in a window. Mm -hmm. But again, when you're when you're looking for something to go back and rewatch, there's not a ton here. Aquata World is this television show better than the 1995 hit movie? Yes, it was profitable. Water World, indeed it is. Although it is dealing with a flood. Huh? Huh? Is 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 Water World in the DCU? I well, I know that uh, Aquaman is very similar. <laughs> That's true. Max Credit Union. Who are you giving credit to? So obviously, Chris, Kristen Milioti, Christine Milioti. I still don't know how. Kristen how Milioti. Say. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a podcast. Um, it's a good one. Overarching, though, and it and it echoes the Milioti stuff. Whoever is in charge of casting in yeah. this universe, and especially for this show, nailed it. Fucking crushed it. Every character, even down to characters we only saw a couple times during this season, were so good. And then the big players all absolutely demolished it. The casting, amazing. Who is the mobster that Oz looks up to? What's his name? I'm blanking right now. The guy's got a real sour puss. In the Falcone family? No, no, when he's a kid. And then he works for him a little bit. Oh, the guy that, uh, well, Rex, are you talking about? Yes, Rex, thank yeah. you. Um, like him, so like Plemonade wise, I think he'd be someone that would be a candidate. But like you're talking about like the casting in this, like even I thought he was great in the episodes that we got, and you picked up on like why someone like Oz would idolize this person and then want to be this person. Yeah, it had a little bit of a Bronx tale to it. Yeah. Oz you can't leave. Like that moment was something that really resonated with Oz. I'll give him Plemonade because when life gives you plemons, you make Plemonade. We only saw him for roughly, he was in two-ish two, episodes, yeah. and he wasn't like a big character in those episodes. But I know you have here uh, Deirdre O'Connor, who plays Deirdre, Deirdre, Deirdre? O'Connell. Really nailed that. Deirdre O'Connell is Francis Cobb, the mother. I fucked that up. <laughs> I'd say the main three had too much screen time to really be yeah. Plemonade, and she was probably in five or six of these episodes but she's only in a few scenes per episode. She did an incredible job. And there's also a whole like, uh, you know, mental thing she's got going on, some sort of a dementia yeah. type of situation. And I thought she did a really good job conveying that. Um, the writing on that as well is very good. And the storytelling yeah. on that, uh, I forget which episode, it's the one where Vic is watching her and you see all the post-it notes around to right. remind her to do stuff. And she would, in scenes, she would go from clear all yeah. there, alert and oriented to jumping back. She'd have these episodes. It's a very specific yeah. kind of dementia that they they depicted in this. I forget what it's called, but I thought it was really good. And the the actress did an amazing job. Oh, also give credit to because I hated this character, and I'm like, this feels like a real person. That kid Squid. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was like, oh, fucking blow this guy's head yeah. off. Yeah. Yes. Please. Pants Ten City. Excite Bike Mania. What on this show got you going? Pretty clearly, Sophia tying people up was all was all I ever needed. Her yellow dress in that was that episode four when mm -hmm. the the comeuppance happens for the Falcons. Um, that was probably the high point of the season. Um, great moment for the character. But I must admit, this show did lack a true standout moment, true standout scene. And I think that's maybe what will keep it from being talked about as one of the all-time greats. I think it was Pete Blackburn from the What Chaos podcast that said he would love for uh, Kristen Milioti to put out a cigarette on him. Couldn't agree more. I'm pretty sure I retweeted that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the end of episode four where she gets her revenge is pretty good. Awesome. Great. Yes. Yep. 
For those of you tardy to the Mac and Goo party, we rate everything on a 40 hot dog rating system. Mac, first off, big ups to everyone involved on this show um, for having a show, a Gotham show, with no Batman. A Batman show with no Batman and still being wildly entertaining, gripping, great characters, taking its time. And not to take jabs at other people, but like, take note, Sony-verse. Take yep. note, Joker. It's possible to do these things. It's possible to do these things. So Although, that's a big thing. Yeah. All that said, we'll get into yeah, we'll why talk about that complicate in yeah. stuff in a couple it minutes. Does. But Colin Farrell's amazing in this. I think he is such a good penguin. And yes, it does uh, come off a little bit more as like a, a joysy guy that's coming. And, but I think it works well for this character, especially when we think of like where Gotham might be in America. I think his mother is amazing in this. Kristen Milioti steals the show. The episodes that are dedicated entirely to her, you'd be saying, wait a second, this is in the Batman universe and it's called the Penguin. Where are these characters? We don't need them. We have Sophia Falcone. We have Sophia G Gigante. And probably episode four, which is her episode um, where they do that, is the best episode of the season. Agreed. All the mobsters, uh, they're not even dime a dozen, but they're all different. And each gang has a different personality. I love that about the show, too. Uh, the kid who played Vic is very good in this. You understand why Penguin, who's dealt with stuff with his foot his whole life and not being... Uh, not wanting to be looked down upon goes with Vic who has a stutter and he kind of, you know, sides with him. And he understands that like people kind of look down upon him as well. They're also both, uh, they both grew up with nothing and they've kind of built to where they are now. And Penguin wants to help him continue to build up even further than that. I really love this show. There is something that I do think takes away from where they're located, not even the storytelling, because you don't need Batman, but you need the fear of Batman. And I don't think the fear of Batman was here. Mm, that's that's for sure. 37 hot dogs. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm in the same range as you, Goo. Um, like you said, the acting, fantastic. The world they build or yes. build out underneath this world, the lower levels of Gotham is great and really is going to help the movies going forward um, and help, you know, Oz become this penguin villain going forward. Um, I think, though, the two biggest things that bother me here is, number one, the thing hanging over this whole Gotham that we'll expand upon, but the Batman stuff, the more you think about it, the more it starts to hurt the show. Now, I'm not too too sure people were thinking about it in the moment, but by the end of the season, it had become a pretty pretty reasonable discourse online. Um, I texted you yeah. telling you all this, and you're like, you're making too big of a deal out of this. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to nitpick. Mm -hmm. I think this is a wonderful show. It is. But when you're in Gotham and you have streets exploding. Whole city blocks. Something's yep. got to give. Yep. And it wasn't even the end of the season. So he had plenty of time to pop up. He doesn't even need to show up. You just need a bat signal. And city block. Yes. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Uh, so I think that puts a damper on the whole thing overall. Um, and that lack of like standout scene in the second half of the show, I think hurts it a little bit. And I also think, and it, the show sort of became a victim of its strength, the character development. Sophia becomes such an amazing character. It almost hurts the show because it's not, it's not her show. No, it but it for where little... she ends up is such a good place. Though. I agree. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying because her character became so great, I cared less about Oz and where he ends up. Yeah. But and you also, it, so if you want to, I'm not, I'm all I'm saying is she is so good. It sort of took away from the yeah. Oz stuff. Because I cared less about him. But if they went into this saying, we want to tell this Sophia Falcone story, but they can't go to HBO and be like, hey, we have this Sophia Falcone show. I agree. Show. I agree. You needed at least to have the Penguin, who is a recognizable character. I'm not saying. Batman, 
you. At I'm not, as don't a, get me wrong. I'm not saying this killed the show. For me, it just hurt it a little bit. A little bit. So, Goo, I think I'm at 36 hot dogs. Okay. Um, I think it's just a tier below greatness. Really, really fucking good. Borderline loved it. Loved most of the show, most of the season. Like, episodes three, four, five, six were great. Mm. The, the middle part of the season was great. Um, I just have a hard time, and this goes into the Halloween stuff. It's hard to remember or have that great love affair with the show when it doesn't end on the high that it achieved in the middle of the season. So that's that. Let's get into spoilers, spoilers, okay. spoilers. Can I just spoilers. mention one thing in spoilers? So we've already mentioned a couple times here that the show just, it needed not even, like, say if the Penguin thinks too highly of himself that he'll be caught by Batman. Maybe mm -hmm. he's, and he's already run into Batman. But say if he thinks so highly of himself that he's like, okay, I'm not going to get caught. I don't even need to think about him. His cronies, the people working underneath Sophia, under Maroney, the they guys. should at least be like, hey, what if he shows up? That's the only line I need. It's it's not. It was not apparent. And to your credit, two weeks ago, you texted me about this whole ba Batman plot hole in this whole series. I started to think about it a little bit. Started seeing it more online. I didn't rewatch the Batman until after I had finished the season. I'm glad I waited. 15 minutes into the Batman, I texted you and I said, oh boy, the Penguin's got a Batman problem. Because 15 minutes into that show, mm -hmm. Jim Gordon, who we don't see in this show, that's a detriment, puts the bat signal up for Batman. Yeah. And over the course of the next 30 minutes, they specifically talk about how those two put the Maronis behind bars. So directly mm. ties them into this mob, this crime story that Oz is tied into. And it really, really hurts the end of this show that Batman does not pop up or is not mentioned. I just that signal mention. Isn't, just a mention. Isn't in there in those last couple episodes. Having it come up at the very end made no sense. And it just bothered me because it was like, okay, they just threw it in there to, to please the fans. The bat signal should have come up weeks before that. Way yes. before that. And especially in episode seven, when a whole fucking city block gets blown up, that that was it right there. That was, moreover, that was the breaking point for me because yeah. they had done a very good job establishing that Oz was really good at working underneath everything and keeping everything as quiet as possible. But he's also someone that wants the spotlight and wants people to know what he's doing. So he might be someone that also wants Batman to know what he's doing, too. Yeah. And Even in the movie, he mentions the Batman, you know my reputation, right? right and he's proud right. of it. The fact that Oz isn't once even just shuddered by the fact that the Batman might appear is bothersome when you rewatch the movie or remember what happened. In, in the, the movie. opening scene of the movie, not like the Riddler stuff or him investigating, when they show the, the lower level goons doing crimes, they're all looking over their shoulders because yes. Batman's been doing it for a year and he's been beating the piss out of people. It's just, it's, it's, it's really bothersome. And also Gordon not popping up is bothersome, especially when he's tied into the mob stuff. That's a, that's a secondary thing to Batman. Um, he, Are like we Houston, being poopy pants fanboys? No, right no, now? no. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. And again, we scored the show still super high, but it is a big thing hanging over this show because like you, all you had to do was even have the bat signal in the background mm -hmm. and, and maybe pretend like he was doing something else. There was bigger fish to fry at the time. But oh, they don't there was also them. it's not in the back, and just throwing it there at the end, just to like, huh? I told uh -huh. you this year. That there was another. There was another Easter egg as well. Not even an Easter egg, but like something that they should have mentioned in there is uh, when Sophia was learning about the women that her father killed. Yeah, they should have had Selena Kyle's mother in there as that a nod, a nice and then a hint toward the letter that she gets at the end of the show. Yep, and then there's also this whole thing where. The police are investigating the Falcone deaths, this big thing. You probably would have called in Gordon and or Batman there. That's mm. part of it. Um, I don't know. It's just it I don't it doesn't make sense. Um, secondary to the to that goo. And of course, Reeves in the in LaFranc have been asked these questions. I think it's more a Reeves question than it is LaFranc because she yeah. was just given a task to to make this show in between the movies. Reeves said, and I quote, that introducing Batman crossing in would mess with the narrative of the show and with Oz. I think it had an adverse effect. I think not having him cross in at all m sort of messed up 
the the narrative of the show and of Oz. It did it didn't make sense. It didn't jive, and I'm I'm just bothered by it. And, and again, he, this is I think we're harping on this because the show could have been even better, and it's just something that's lingering in the minds of almost everyone that watched this show. Outside of the well being of his mother, he had no fear in this show. Right, right, and he's clearly fearful of the Batman in the movie. So it's just those two things, those two ideas can't coexist. Okay, we're really sorry about that. This is a <laughs> really right, good show. Right. It's a very it good show. Very good. Let's get to yes. the finale, Goo. Okay. Um, we find out at the beginning of this finale that Francis, Oz's mom, was going to have her own son, Oz, killed by Rex once she figured out he was responsible for her two other sons' death. That's pretty fucking dark. That's yep, really dark. And I love how obsessed with his mother they made him in this show and it's a real oedipus complex here. it is and all he wants his goal the entire time we learn of it i think at the end of episode seven is to put his mother in the highest building in gotham where she can look over the city and it's one of those um like when you finally get there you finally have time you can read all the books but your glasses break she <laughs> is no longer able to he needs his glasses. she's no longer able to move she's yeah. she had a stroke she's not really there she's not anymore. able to reap the benefits she's not able to enjoy it what he worked for oz is able to put her in the highest room in gotham where she's able to look out but she's not able to enjoy it but i actually oz, think you that go ahead that's he is purposefully putting her through that torture because of what she says to him in this finale episode. I don't think so. I think, I that think he's so. I think he's doing it because he, she's living in hell now. No, but he always wanted to get her approval and he always wanted her love. And he's like, this is what There's I promised that, you. For sure. And this is what I promised you. And you pretty much said that if I do this, you're going to love me. And while she I wasn't know. able to talk, he had <laughs> the, the prostitute dress as his mother. Yeah. And Bizarre. But yeah. to that point, I mm -hmm. think part of that, why he's showing her and keeping her alive there, mom, I did it, but now he's bragging about it because she also doubted him, which is what he finds out in this episode. Now he's sticking it to her. He's not, that, he's she not didn't showing know. it. She he's did not doubt him. She wanted him dead. She fucking hates him. She well, said yeah, that. Yeah, but didn't, didn't believe in him. And that is revealed in this episode. That's maybe the biggest That's beyond deal. doubt and not believing. She yes. wanted him dead. I know, but Oz doesn't find that out until this episode. Yeah. So I think that that culmination, her on the hospital bed on the 87th floor, I think is him, his last laugh to her, him sticking it to her. Um, I do like that that club that they show Monroe's club in the past, mm -hmm. the present, that plays a, a, a big role in this. That was a nice little setting. Um, I am so, so, so glad that Sophia Falcone didn't get killed here. Agreed. Uh, where, where she ends up back in Arkham is so much better and so much worse for her character. I loved that scene. She was ready for death. She was accepting death. Yeah. Fine. Do it. I'm over it. I'm happy where I am. I'm happy with who I've become. And instead she's going back to Arkham and on top of it, on top of it, it all of that exonerates Oz from everything. And it's a quote unquote, a fate, a fate worse than death. She's going to hell. She's back in Arkham. I could have used a better um, a better Easter egg at Arkham, like a character than Magpie. Sure. I don't even know who that is. But um, you know what? Maybe a young doctor named Harleen Quinzel. Oh, well, I do think there is some some people are a little over the Joker Harley Quinn thing. So I'm glad that I'm saying more like she's not Harley Quinn yet. She's yeah. just the doctor there. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um. We get a couple snippets here of Bella Real. You know, they're in, at the courthouse or whatever, at the whatever, uh, which is nice because, you know, she has a, a, a decent relationship with Bruce in the movie. Mm. So that'll that'll come back um, to Goose point. Oz thinks he's made out like a bandit in this finale. Comes to find out his mom has become a carrot. She's a vegetable. She's oh, not Jesus, Mac. She's not able to really enjoy anything in life anymore. She's essentially brain dead she's there no. but she's not and, and so, she made a point either episode one or two being like don't let me get to this point kill me yep and this all plays in for that's that was in you know what i'm I, i'm thinking about sort of stumbling upon now and i'm thinking about it in my head ultimately this ruins the the series of dexter but in dexter 
Oh, I was gonna say fi- when this his, show ruins Dexter. When Julie Benz gets killed, yeah, that was the last tether Dexter had to being a human being. In this, the last tether that Oz had was his mother and the well-being of his mother. And yeah. what happens in the first scene after he finds out his mother isn't there? He kills Vic. And what a visceral scene that is. It was heart wrenching, obviously emotional. I think we all saw it coming, right? We all knew this was the end game for Vic. I don't know. The first thing he says is, You're like family to me. And yeah. then he moites him. Well, that's what, what Oz is realizing. You know, he can't have family. That's what he realized. Yeah. He 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 realizes Vic is a weakness for him the way his mother was. It's someone yeah. that could hold him back. And the and the the extra thing there is I think also Oz is a little worried that Vic is too similar to him. And eventually Vic might try to overthrow him Mm. the way Oz did with all the people of authority in his life. So it was twofold there. Um, A very, very visceral scene and really shows you he becomes the penguin in this moment, right? He was Oz and now he's the penguin. He starts going. (laughs) And then he fucking robs him afterwards. too. Yeah, that was no, that was the best part of it. Brutal. (laughs) Brutal. (laughs) Thanks for the 20 bucks, kid. (laughs) <laughs> I can go get some slush puppies. Um, we see Sophia back in Arkham and what's his face? Dr. Julian Rush comes mm-hmm. in with a letter uh, addressed to her from her half sister. And goo, call me a fucking moron. I completely forgot. It was that- a major part of the Batman. And I hadn't rewatched it. That's I know me. that you don't like listening to me, but I mentioned it on a news dump roughly four weeks ago yeah wasn't paying attention uh i completely forgot that her half sister is selena kyle so yes. selena kyle met, shoots her a a, a, a telegram at, at arkham and i guess this is a pretty decent storyline in the comics so they're gonna obviously play with this i i would be surprised if selena doesn't like maybe try to break sophia out of arkham or something like that that'd be that'd be kind of interesting to see going forward maybe there is a lawyer that can help them. Maybe a, a DA. Maybe there is a there you go. RV dent. Ayo. Ayo. Um, and, and again, call, uh, comparing these or contrasting these two characters, as we talked about, Oz is seeking the way that people look at Sophia in this world, the hangman. Oz yeah. is seeking that, and Sophia is trying to get away from it. It's a great back and forth. And then secondary to that, Oz has learned he wants no family. But by the end of this, Sophia is like comforted by the fact that she still has family left. Yeah, she desires that. She seeks that. Um, and it's it's just funny to see how these two are thrown into the same blender and they end up in completely different spots. I, it is I, also I, I great really like that. How at the end of episode four, when she murders her, her wow, when she murders her whole family and she embraces being the hangman and she stops wearing stuff around her neck, and then you have like the the little things around her neck. Mm. She's not afraid to show them off anymore because if that's what people want, that's what she'll give them. And, and I also like, like, because in that scene, what what she's realizing is they aren't her family. They might yeah. be by blood, and that's why she goes by Gigante after that. They weren't her family members. They just happened to be related to her. Um, so that that's why that episode is the best episode of the season. That's why Sophia Falcone is the best character in this, in this show. Uh, Goo, we get as he walks into this whatever uh, under floor penthouse, yes. he's w- holding the top hat, puts it down next to the umbrella, and we see he's wearing the tuxedo as well. He's in his full penguin ensemble. They don't really beat you over the head with it, but it's a nice little nod to what the character generally looks like in in the comics. And I wanted him to him. pick up an umbrella to shoot someone, and then it <laughs> opens, and there's uh, there's a carousel on there, and he says, "Ah, it's a drag umbrella." We get to the final scene with him and Eve and him and his mother. Um, Eve is wearing his mother's dress. It's a very bizarre scene. Speaks to how insane Oz is. Um, And again, Oz gets everything he wants ultimately, but it's a tragic end because he worked so hard to get where he he has, and now his mom can't even reap the benefits of it. All his loved ones are dead, and it's just him. And Eve has this quote, nothing's standing in your way now. Yeah, yeah, and then we get the bat signal. Right. And um he also something that he always wanted was that he wanted to be like Rex and he wanted the admiration and the love. He of wants his to be co- like Sophia. Well, he wanted to be more like Rex. He wanted the the admiration and the love of his community. He wanted to be the person that everyone goes to, but he also made the point of like 
he's cut ties with everybody now and he hasn't quite gotten that. So he's using, you know, his uh, female friend there to just, it's just tell him what he wants to hear in his warped mind of yeah. what he now believes the world is. Yeah. And uh, going forward here, I guess we'll start, start with the Oz stuff. I think it's pretty clear with him in that scene in the courtroom, in the mayor's chair, or whatever, they're going to yeah. pursue this whole mayor, penguin, mayor, Oz storyline that's popped up a couple times before. And I think that definitely lays the groundwork for Court of Owls stuff, right? Like that's going to have to play. Maybe by like, yeah batman 3 or a show or something like yeah that. maybe in between yeah. but i think you'll get the the groundwork laid for that in the second movie um goo one of the biggest questions or theories online is that dr julian rush who we see help sophia and still is kind of helping sophia at the end you're not quite sure um is he going to be a mean meaningful character going forward there were some scarecrow talk right away but i think i think you might be on to to what what he really is going to be yeah so um I think that he might be the Mad Hatter. I think that they're going to go a little outside the box here and just not use all the same Christopher Nolan characters as well. But um, the Mad Hatter is a master hypnotist, which we mm. see in most of the episodes here with him. He has those red uh, red lights that people kind of thought, oh, that's yeah. like a fear talks. And no, it's, it's not giving Scarecrow at all. No, um, he's a Gotham City adversary of Batman. Jarvis Tetch is the character's name. Uh, he's delusional and believes that he is the incarnation of the Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. But um, they could also kind of make that more of a reality thing where he, sure. he's, he believes that he's something more than he is. And um, I know in certain comics or uh, in the uh, Batman, the animated series, he obsesses over a woman named Alice. You could just substitute that with he obsesses over Sophia. Yeah, and we've already seen this universe change names a little bit. We've seen it in the Spider-Man movies. You know, MJ isn't Mary Jane. Like, I'm yeah. perfectly fine changing names of most characters. It doesn't bother oh, me too much. Actually, Julian Rush, not that far off. We're looking syllables mm -hmm. with Jervis Close. Hatch. Yeah. Close. Um, another thing people are talking about online, and I, I don't really subscribe to this because I think it's pretty definitive at the end there. People are wondering if Vic is 100% dead. Uh, again, this is a comic book franchise after all. So is anyone really dead to me? I think so. Yes. But they think he could come back and play something down the line. Yeah. Cause people were saying a Victor Zaz, but was that just because of his name? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. That, that makes sense. And then of course we get this Sophia Selena storyline that's brewing. And I think, I think for sure what we'll get the, the groundwork laid for in the second movie and maybe see in a second show is Sophia Selena stuff, or maybe that comes up in the movie, um, and then Oz and Court of Owls type of stuff, more more of the politicking, behind-the-scenes stuff of Gotham that we haven't seen too, too much yet. I don't know. I think that you could do, and we're going to get to this more in your sack, but I think that you could do an amazing job with a character that we have seen many times, but given eight episodes, Harvey Dent, you could really flesh out that character. Like, think to the Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. We... We got a lot of Harvey Dent, not a lot of Two Face. The only thing I'll say there. to that, Goo, and this will, we will have to see who the villain's going to be in the second movie, but I don't want to happen, which happens a ton in third movies of trilogies, as them throw like eight villains in the last movie because there's so many people in play. So they sort of have to concentrate, you know, pick a couple lanes here. They can't do too many. Well, no, but even if you have a bunch of villains that you show in the shows or, like, even to show for a second in the movies, they don't have to be central characters to the movies. No, I I know. But once you introduce them, you kind of have to sort of see that through. No, because if you do a ton of Harvey Dent and then you end Two-Face and then you just put him in Arkham, then you're all set. <laughs> well, then you're like, why did we even do this? <laughs> well, if you're giving me more Sophia Falcone, I'm going to take it. Sure, sure. All right, I don't think we need to run through episode by episode. I think we kind of hit everything. No, but I will mention um, I do love the slush puppy stuff from the first episode. <laughs> End of the first episode, yeah. I do like the flashbacks to Arkham with Sophia in mm -hmm. her episodes. That was episode also, three or episode four, actually. I also love seeing her breaking point of when yep. she's like, fuck it, I'm going to start killing people. Mm -hmm. That's fine by me. Uh, Vic's crown point backstory was very good. And then also when he took the penguins mom there and she's like, I'll come back and crown point. Are we serious <laughs> right now? 
I, I, I think too, um, there could have been born here, but, because they wrote the characters so well, we were so invested in these characters mm -hmm. that all this backstory stuff and all this flashback stuff really worked. We see that done in other shows, and it doesn't work because you don't care about the characters, but it worked for this show. Two things, actually. There's a really good, in Crown Point, you can see where the water level was, like where it hit, with like the discolorations on the uh, buildings and on the houses there. And then also, I love how if there's a big crowd of people, kind of like a protest, You'll see random posters for the Riddler in there being still like, works. hey, I still, I still support this guy. Yeah, still around, still a thing. Yep. Episode four is the best of the episodes, I would say. Episode five has the cooking with Maroni and Sophia. He makes that delicious eggplant soup, I believe. It was the most fatherly experience she had ever had, which was mm -hmm. which was nice for the character. Episode Both five. Characters. I believe kills uh, squid. I hate squid. Might be episode six, actually. No, I think that, I think it was. I uh, yeah, some somewhere in there when Vic just gets sick of him and finally shoots him in the face. And then I believe episode five is when him is when Oz and Vic finally cut ties. No, actually, episode three is when he cuts ties with Sophia because uh, Vic hits the Maronis and leaves Sophia for dead. And that's pretty when they much. jump to the flashback at the at the end of episode three, beginning of four. Episode five, Oz has TikTok. <laughs> yeah, well, TikTok's on the phone. I don't know if Oz has TikTok. I was like, hey, check out my scroll. And you start scrolling <laughs> like through. Like my dance. <laughs> uh, oh, the the drug lair. I love how he go. his drug lair is where he killed his brothers. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a really fucked up thing. Um, we already harped on it again. Um, I guess no one really knows where the Batcave is, but... Yeah seemingly building your drug lair in an underground tunnel system where Batman is lingering is a bad idea. <laughs> I also love when Maroney dies and Oz is like, you fuck, I'm supposed to kill you. Don't <laughs> die of a heart attack. Yeah. And then he shoots him like three times. Oh, yeah. here, here's the big thing with the timeline that I, I really felt like it had to have taken place over a couple months. So he gets that underground lair. And what are we maybe a week, two weeks into the show? Mm -hmm. It cuts to later the whole layer is filled with mushrooms that had to have taken weeks to grow all that shit. So this show for sure had to have taken place over like six weeks to two months. And if it's any less than that, I'm going to have a hard time believing the, the, uh, the timeline here. Yeah, I am. I think we're good. Yeah. We're good on. Yep. 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 yep, yep. I love the show. I enjoyed it greatly, but mention Batman, please. <laughs> Let's get into Maxac. And Maxac could be anything, it could be a boat, and we will look at what is coming up in this universe. What did Matt Reeves say, Mac? Uh of, of course, coming off our award-winning Feige says, we're here with Reeves says, Goo! Yeah. Reeves says the penguin season two is now being discussed. I think this began as a one-off miniseries and now i think because people like this show so much and because big audience there's, there's more story to tell yeah they're beginning to discuss a second season of this i ask you mm -hmm. do we need it do we want it i don't know if i need it i think i would prefer getting other characters do i want it sure i would definitely watch i know at the beginning of the season colin farrell made a point of like i don't want to do a season two this is a lot of makeup and a yep. lot of time. Yeah, I think we've told our, our Oz Penguin story here. I don't think we need a Penguin season two. I'm happy to watch him pop up in other yep. stories in this universe. I don't think I need it. I don't think I want it. I think it's just going to diminish what we've already gotten. Um, to that point, uh, Colin Farrell has already revealed that he has five or six scenes yep. in the Batman 2 and is attached to star in that third movie. So yeah. we already know he's not going to die in two, which makes sense. I think he's still going to be kind of playing behind the scenes in this second movie. Um, so maybe there is room for a season two between movie two and three. I don't know. Colin Farrell was also on Hot Ones. I don't know if it was recently, whatever it is, but uh, he was talking about how actors always talk about, you know, you do one artsy movie for yourself and then a blockbuster for, you know, for the money or for the fans. And it's like, <laughs> no, this is this is all for you because you get the money from that movie and then you get to act it up in this one. So stop saying one for you, one for me. It's all for you. Eat both Twix. Yeah, I love Colin Farrell.
uh, he's pretty great. Yeah. Um, so then the question that I hear for you, Mac, is if we're not going to get a penguin, which I don't know if we need another penguin season, what Batman character would you like to see get their own season of television? So I think it'll tie in well, and you've you've already mentioned him. I think it would tie in well with what they're building underneath the overall story is just Gotham and the politics and the mm. corrupt politics really feels like a Harvey Dent Court of Owls situation would play out really well. So I, I do think like a two-faced Harvey Dent type of season would would work really well. And I and I feel like <coughs> excuse me. I feel like um this second movie, the closer we get to it, I, I'm starting to feel like more and more it's gonna be Mr. Freeze as the villain. And we're Ooh. dealing with a winter type of setting. It's been awfully silent on the villain front with this movie. And we have introduced and talked about other villains. So I'm starting to think Freeze is going to be the primary villain of the Batman too. I was going to say, because I would love a Mr. Freeze television show. I don't know how cost effective that would be, though, because his power is the CGI, the, the effects that you would need for that character. I would love a Heart of Ice type of story. Um, but I cause... think that backstory you can do in a movie. No, no well you can enough. still do it in the movie. I'm just yeah. saying I want Mr. Freeze. I would okay. really like Mr. Freeze. I think if you're looking to spend the same amount of money, like, you know, not a ton of effects, uh, more a dialogue-driven show, a character-driven show, Harvey Dent makes a lot of sense because you could just pick up this story with Harvey Dent and how he'll now deal with these characters. Mm -hmm. I really would love, and I don't think they would do this, is a Clayface television show. I think there is a lot that you can okay. do with this actor who is aging and then gets into a car accident, disfigured, much like the substance, relies on something to make him good looking again, and then this starts to warp his body and his mind. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, they just haven't laid the groundwork for any of that. So it would yeah. just catch me by surprise if they went that route. You could also do... Um, but you also need a big enough name. Like maybe you could do a clay face in the background. Could do. Like, well, that so that's I don't why think, I don't even think you could do a Mad Hatter show. You would need him to be a background character. That's why I also am starting to think because to me, like Riddler's not A tier, B tier villain, which is why I loved Riddler yeah. in the first movie, and I think Freeze is in that same tier. Which is why it's starting to feel more and more like Freeze. I think you could name a show Freeze. I think you could name a show Two Face. I think that there are characters like that. I don't want a Joker show. I'm all set with that. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But we'll joke it out for now. I think you need at least a B level villain. Someone, I think you need a villain that popped up many times on the Adam West show or um, someone that was in the Burton Schumacher verse. Like those are pretty well known villains. I think once you go deeper into the CD level, that might be a tough sell for HBO. Well, yeah, and they also haven't really got into the, you know, souped up power top types like Poison yeah. Ivy. So I don't think we're going to deal oh, with Poison, Poison Ivy in this too. universe, you know? Yeah. Um, something would have to happen. Maybe the free stuff gets that rolling a little bit. But, like, because it has been very real. Realism mm -hmm. has been part of this Reeves yeah. verse. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they cross that line at all and get into some of that more supernatural shit. I also would have loved really anyone from the Bat family, whether it be any of the Robins or uh, Batgirl, but we're in year two of Batman, possibly getting closer to year three. We wouldn't have any of those characters yet. Yeah, uh, Hush is the other one that everyone wanted when the first mm -hmm. movie came, finished. There, there was a lot of talk of that. So I think, I, to me, it's down to Hush or Freeze for this for the second movie. And hopefully we'll have that answer within the next few months, right? Once they start shooting, we're going to have a good idea of who the villain is. All right, Mac, where can the people find us? You can find us on X and on Instagram at Mac and Goo Podcast. Every other platform we are Mac Ampersand Goo. That incl includes uh, Max Just Seven Goo. That includes Facebook, Stitcher, TuneIn, Castbox, Spreaker, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Radio. We are on Spotify, but more importantly, we're on Apple Podcasts. Get on there, rate, review, subscribe, five stars. If you do that, we'll get your free Mac and Goo t shirt from the folks over at Watertown Sportswear. Watertown Sportswear on 34 Mod Auburn Street in Watertown. WatertownSportswear.com, expert screen printing and embroidery. TeePublic.com, merch. Merch, 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 merch. Check us out at the beginning of next week for a news dump. And then we're getting close to movies. Yeah, we have. Uh... 
Yeah, I next know weekend Wicked, is Gladiator, uh, Moana. Gladiator. Gladiator's next weekend, I yeah. believe. So we'll see. Oh, yeah, and Wicked, right? Yeah, Wicked. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we'll probably do Gladiator at some point. In the Let's next just do weeks. a fucking double feature, and we'll call it one of those dumb names that everyone has. <laughs> What's go. it called? Glicked? Glicked or, or Wadiator. <laughs> I'm going to go Wadiator. I like that better. Okay. All right, sure. So check us out then. Tim Burton? Bye. Please flip the cassette over to side B to continue the adventure. Now it's time for girls jumping on trampolines.